Our topic today is juggling work and home education. My guest is Diane Demarais. She is a freelance nutritionist and runs a small business selling massage cups and oil. Her husband is also self-employed and both work from home. They have two daughters, aged 13 and 11, and they've been home educating for the past three years. Diane, why did you decide to home educate your children? Well, it's been at the back of my mind for a long, long time. I love teaching, so I don't know, maybe it's because of that. Um, so both my kids went to primary school, and when my eldest um, was doing her last year at primary school, uh, that's when I really decided to go for it, because first of all, she had some social issues. I could see her being a bit stressed. Um, I knew it was a bit from her friends being a bit nasty. Um, I could see her battling as well a bit with studies. It's not that it was a major thing, but she was very tired, um, didn't want to work really. Um, and the other one, Chloe, was also very tired. They had very long days because we live a bit far from school. So they would leave at seven, come back for, at four, four thirty, have one hour or two hours of, of homework. Um, and I didn't see them really enjoying it. It was like force feeding. So I really wanted them to have energy to enjoy learning and to do other things like baking and gardening and sewing and i really wanted my kids to learn other things besides being have their nose in the book all the time um, and i really wanted to strengthen their their self-image their self-esteem um, and i also wanted to come out of the of the system i felt we were stuck in the system and i really wanted to try that freedom of timetable um, and strengthen their levels as well. I, I really thought that if I could teach them one-to-one, -one, it would really help them um, get, have a strong, stronger basis, a stronger, stronger skills to go back to school eventually when they would want to, if they would want to. How does your home set up work? Do you have a dedicated school space or a dedicated office space? Well, at first we didn't. Um, when my husband and I were working from home, it was just working from the bedroom and the dining room table and the kitchen counter. So it was a, a bit of a mess. There were fires everywhere. And when we decided to homeschool, I, I said we really need a, like a space to have all the books and the files and have a really working space, a real working space. So we decided to build on top of our garage a little room which is very nice because there's nice um, fresh air coming in and the trees all around. So we, we did that just for the homeschooling. So now all our desks are there. There's four desks in the room, but there's a lot of shelves, a lot of books everywhere. Um, and the girls managed to have their, as you can see at the back of me there, uh, their little blackboard, um, their little pin board as well. So we, we've been working with that in, in that space for two years. Um, but this year, the girls wanted to have um, their bedroom as a working space. So they have a desk in the room and that's where they work now. And I thought I'm not going to force them to be in a special, special specific space. Um, I think we were disturbing them a bit with phone calls and all that. So they wanted to really have their quiet time. Um, and it works quite well. We, we started our year about a month ago. Um, and they're now very autonomous, so they can be self-disciplined. I don't need to look at them all the time as I maybe had to um, when we first started. So it's easier now to perhaps close the door and then separate work from home education. How do you balance the two responsibilities? It's been a huge challenge, a big learning curve, which has been very beneficial, I think, for for me personally and mentally and for the girls as well, because we sort of, especially as moms, we love to multitask, although it's really tiring. Um, so I used to really multitask. I used to set them up on an exercise or a lesson and then go back to my computer. And very soon I was feeling very dizzy and tired and sometimes frustrated because obviously you get interrupted. The girls need you, they, they don't understand something. So I decided very quickly to, to stop doing that and to really focus on their work. For me, it's like a morning job, my homeschooling. And I only work in the afternoon once they once they finished, unless they do it, they're busy doing a little um, like a little test, which I have to send back to the school. 
then I know that they have to work by themselves for an hour. And then I tend to something very easy, very soft, nothing hectic. Um, so I just get a bit forward with my admin. Um, otherwise, it's just them and only them. They close their doors, but I'm in between the two bedrooms all day from 8.30 to 2.30, checking on them, seeing if they need me. And it really feels better that way. And when they finish at half past two, 2.30 2 in the afternoon, that's when I really start working. Um, I sometimes catch up maybe during lunchtime if I have something important to send or early morning, I wake up a bit earlier or after they've been to bed, they've gone to bed in the evening, that's when I catch up as well. But otherwise, yes, now I really separate both. Um, I didn't ask you to prepare for this question, um, but I want to know how involved is your husband? Does he also have to juggle or is he, um, does, he have, does he enjoy a little bit more freedom? Well, no, my husband is a career man. So um, he was in the hotel industry for years and he's really career driven. Um, so I'm the, I'm the working mom and the full-time mom and the full-time housewife. Um, so that's, that's my life, um, which I accept and I enjoy although it's really challenging at times. So my husband only now with COVID, he works in tourism. So with COVID, um, obviously there's a big slowdown. So it's only now that he has time and he takes time to help with um, physics and chemistry, things like that. Things that I don't really love or understand very well. Um, otherwise, no, it's been me and only me um, dealing with this. Yeah, that seems to be a common occurrence. Um, and I yeah. asked, well, what would be your top tips for moms trying to juggle work and home education? Well, I did think of it because I've been learning a lot myself on it. So I wrote a few things down. Um, first of all, I would say get organized as much as you can at soon, very soon, as soon as possible. Um, get organized with the space, the files, the notebooks. Um, and really make sure that everything is where it should be because I think it takes time. And when the child is busy working and you're looking for something, you're looking for a book or something, it can be very stressful because it's little things that add up. So get organized, um, have a look at the, the timetable of the following day prior to starting the day. Check if you will understand everything or if you don't, go on YouTube for a tutorial. I think we need to self-teach before we can teach. And I find myself sometimes when I haven't organized and there's a tricky maths question, the child is like a bit, you know, feeling a bit weird because the mom doesn't know what's going on. And it's okay most of the times. But um, I think the child feels more um, at peace and more interest if, if you know what you're talking about. So I'd say really have a look the night before um, because I personally don't prepare every lesson as a teacher. The curriculum is really self-explanatory. I just check that I know everything. If the ch ch child doesn't understand, I can explain. Um, then I would say put the phone on silence, especially if you work, you know, people don't know, they're going to call all day. So I'd say put the phone on silence and when you can just have a look, send a message, I'll call you later. Um, or maybe if you have a voice message or something like that to get back to the course in the afternoon. Um, because it's really annoying when the phone rings and the child is trying to focus and you're explaining something and you get disturbed and you want to attend both at the same time. Also keep a routine um, in place for sleep time, meal time, wake up time. Um, and school finish time, if I can say it like that. Um, for me, I will stop at three o'clock maximum. If the girls aren't finished, I say, don't worry, we'll do it tomorrow because otherwise everyone gets frustrated and tired and I need to start working at three. Otherwise, there's no time for my sports. There's no time for, to cook meals and so on. Um, also, keep your diary handy. There's things that when you have your own business that come out up, you know, and you want to write it down so you can attend to later. So you can forget things and it can become frustrated. So if I always have my diary downstairs with me when I, in between the two bedrooms. Um, so when I think of something, I say, sorry, sorry, just give me one second. And I write it down and go back to the, to the child afterwards. Um, I'd say also make 
sure that the children revise every afternoon. Um, I think that one hour revision every afternoon enables the child to really um, remember and memorize the important things because it takes a long time on the mom and the child to get the child to talk about a lesson that he doesn't remember, even if it's poetry. So I'd say during um, the homeschooling hours, we do exercising, we explain the lessons and everything, but everything like history, geography, um, poetry again, or vocab, whatever, another language, I'd say keep it for the afternoon. And then in the afternoon, they can quickly um, recite to the mom while we are cooking dinner, for example. So it needs to be a relaxed time. Also something I've learned, accept that we can't do everything at once. Um, and maybe we can push delays for the clients to attend later. Maybe we can just, you know, make adjustments, delegate, etc. So we don't squeeze ourselves in time and put pressure on ourselves. Also, I find that sticking to weekends and school holidays is both important for the kids and for the working mom. Um, it's a break for the working mom. And number two, it's very important for the kids to see their friends during holiday times and it keeps them happy and not you know, miserable because they're just by themselves all the time. Um, I found also that doing some oral work rather than getting the child to write everything down worked a lot um, for the kids' motivation. It's a lot of sharing, it's oral uh, exercising as well. Um, all the writing is very important, but I try to balance both. When they just write the whole day, they get very tired and they, re they get despondent and they don't want to work that long. Um, so I think oral work is very good as well and it keeps your finishing time on time. Um, and that's it. I think prioritize your life as well. We can't work, homeschool and do social work and voluntary work and, you know, all these things. I think we need to prioritize. I've learned that it's a huge responsibility to homeschool children. It's a relaxed atmosphere, but we, it's a lot of responsibilities. It's a big thing we're doing. It's a big job. So it's a, you know, it's a few years of our lives that we need to have the children centered um, in our life. Um, I, I just had a thought that I also think your kids are learning such important life skills by seeing how you balance work and family and um, the fact yeah. that they can be involved in your business. Um, I think that's a great benefit. It is, it is, you know, um, I also wanted to set up a self-sufficient farm. We have a piece of land on the mountains and that was one of my projects and I wanted them to be involved in it because to me it's the future. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, we didn't do it yet. We haven't done it yet. But my kids do help me with my business, um, not with nutrition, but with my small um, business of massage cups. They've been with me to events, um, sharing testers and bringing the box for me, listening to me talking, um, doing some stock counting. But also, you know, now they have time for baking, for gardening, and they're actually sewing with my mom and doing some um, knitting as well. So I think it's, it's great because they're learning a lot of skills and they're touching a bit on everything. So that they, they're also self-teaching piano and ukulele uh, from YouTube. And I think it's great because they've learned to be autonomous, to self-teach, to touch a bit to, at everything. And to me, it's so important that they actually know what they like and what they want to be later. And it was one of the things actually that motivated my choice. Diane, thank you very much for your time. Um, and it was a lovely discussion. And I wish you all the best with your business and your future ventures.